Alright guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a quick look at how to implement one of these into your game. Game Maker natively supports more or less all like modern types of gamepad, and uh, setting them up to work is actually pretty straightforward. You can find more or less anything you need to know about gamepad and gamepad inputs by pressing F1 and typing in gamepad and going to this little page in the index called gamepad input. Listed here is more or less every command that has anything to do with gamepads and gamepad input, and all of the uh, constants uh, surrounding gamepad input and the, what, all the different buttons and just like that. It works more or less the same way as the keyboard input stuff does. So like, there's equivalence to like keyboard underscore check with gamepad underscore button underscore check and so on and so forth. And the only real differences are when it comes to things like analog axes and so on, which we'll be touching on in this video. So here I have just the, the very basics of the, the platform game from my original platformer tutorial gone all the way back, I could have used one of the more further along advanced ones, but I went all the way back to the very beginnings of it, just to keep it simple, We're just moving left and right and jumping. So we're going to do move left and right using the left analog stick, and we're just going to jump with the A button. Okay, so I'm going to close that, and here we have up our step event for the player object, okay, and it has all this basic stuff where we were using a variable to store 1, minus 1, or 1 for like uh, moving right, moving left, or, or jumping. So there can be ones, zeros, and minus ones in these. And because we're only using ones and minus ones, what we can do is kind of treat these um, this variable assignments like e expressions that we would use for if statements, where we would check to see if something was true or false, and it would return one or zero. So we can do the same sort of thing here. So where I say key underscore right equals keyboard check vk right, uh, that's going to return a one if the right arrow key is being pressed or a zero if it's not, right? So if I then go ahead and put the OR symbol, that's those two vertical lines, similar to how we use the AND symbol and stuff like that in IF, uh, in if statements, uh, the OR symbol returns uh, a 1 if either one of the two conditions you present are true, or returns a 0 if neither of them are true. So I'm going to say if keyboard check VK right is true, or gamepad underscore axis underscore value open brackets um, device number uh, is zero because it's just um, the gamepad plugged into slot one basically um, if you've got multiple players and you'll need zero naught through three or whatever or however many you have plugged in and then the axis index um, that's a particular constant it was listed on that page in the index but we want to use the left analog stick which is referred to by the constant GP underscore axis LH. All of those are listed on that page, that gamepad input page in the help menu uh, for like the different analog sticks and the different axes. We want the horizontal axis of our left stick, which is GP axis L for left stick, H for horizontal. Okay. Close that, and then this rule return basically the value of that, which can go between naught and one, and well, it can go between minus one and one, depending on how far along the axis it is. So I just want to see if it's greater than zero, which means it's we're, we're pushing to the right. So I'm going to say greater than zero. Close bracket. Semicolon. So that's going to basically return either a one uh, if either one of those are true, or a zero if neither one of them is true meaning that we can use both of those inputs together. Now I can do the same thing here for the left direction, um, but because I want to return a negative in either case, I either want to return 0 or minus 1 for left, just because that's how we happened to set that up before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the whole thing in brackets like this, and put the minus in front of it. So we work out our 1 or 0 answer, and then we turn it into minus 1 or minus 0, which is obviously still 0. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again and put the OR symbol in there, there's two vertical lines. Say so the same thing, gamepad underscore axis underscore value, uh, device 0, gp underscore axis lh, uh, close bracket, less than 0. Okay, but keeping that in that big bracket, so the whole thing is wrapped in that pair of black blackets, brackets, as you can see, by the fact they're highlighted in blue. Put a semicolon on the end of there to finish that off. Now I can run this, and it's important that I do because it'll demonstrate something kind of important. You can see I was like moving right, right off the bat there, and that's because there's currently no dead zone set for this controller. So like this is working, and like I can show you. Well, 
right so you can see I'm controlling it with the controller uh, and I can still control it with the arrow keys as well but it's a bit hard to at the moment because the no, there's no dead zone set what I mean by the fact that there's no dead zone set is that uh, this axis is pretty sensitive like like moving it the tiniest amount or just leaving it like like leaning a little bit like it something that naturally does in just a resting position will trigger it to move because it'll be greater than or less than zero. What we want to do is implement a dead zone, uh, which we could do manually by just checking the values are above a certain number, but you can also, there's also a command in Game Maker to set a specific dead zone for the gamepad axis. So we'll go back into the player's create event, because we only need to do this once, and set gamepad underscore set underscore axis underscore dead zone. And this will set a dead zone for every, um, every axis, so both sticks in every direction on the gamepad for device 0 and I'm going to set that dead zone to be something massive just so we can really notice the difference. I'll set it to be 0.7 okay so it's between 0 and 1 basically and basically it means it's going to reject uh, any axis input that's below 0 0.7 in either direction okay so if I'm only pushing this like halfway it won't trigger because that will be 0 0.5 so it'll just return a 0 instead because it'll just ignore it unless it's above 0 0.7. So now if I run the game again, should be able to see, like if I move this as close as I can, like I can push this a little bit and it doesn't do anything. But if I push it the whole way, I move. So see I'm pushing about halfway, it doesn't do anything. Full way it does. Okay, and that's that's all the dead zone really does, and it's pretty useful. Realistically, you'd probably want to set that to something a bit lower, but like I set it just really high, just so you could really obviously tell the difference. So the last thing we want to do now is the easiest thing, which is just to set up a button for jumping as well as uh, our space bar. So all we're going to do here is again we're going to use that or um, or symbol. I'm going to write gamepad underscore button underscore check underscore press. You have events for check and pressed and released just as you do with keyboard just if you have keyboard check pressed keyboard check released and just keyboard check you have a uh, gamepad button check gamepad button check pressed gamepad button check released okay works in the same way so if i open up a bracket here and again it's device number zero you just need to tell which pad you're looking for and the button we want to press is gp underscore face underscore one gp underscore face one that's the constant that refers to the A button on an Xbox pad, or just um, button 1 on uh, the face of like a modern gamepad, which will generally be the A button on anything styled like a 360 controller, or the X button on a PlayStation controller, um, you get the idea, yeah? So now with that set, you should be able to run the game, and basically just control the gamepad now. So, let me demonstrate again. I move left and right, and I can jump with the A button. And the benefit of this, the way I've set it up with those all statements, is I can also just use the keyboard, as I was doing before. But then I can also use the pad. Okay, there it is. That's very, very simple, um, basic gamepad support and game maker. I uh, hope you found that useful. Uh, let me know if you want to hear anything more about gamepad stuff or you want me to go into any more detail. There are a few cool little metal commands on like checking how many devices you have connected and stuff like that. Um, if you'd like to see that, then leave a comment in the, the yeah, comment in the comments. I guess where else would you leave them? Um, thanks for thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers, guys.